hi guys welcome to my channel and thank you so much for being here today i'm not alone i'm with one of my friends olusha martin by the way she's got her own youtube channel i will link below please 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 go show her some love and go subscribe um i've been on a journey of asking you guys what would you like to talk about especially when it comes to sit downs because i feel like there's nothing in this world i haven't covered and Oh, I hate it when I don't remember who gave me the idea, but I'll credit, I'll put your name down. Give me an idea about basically giving advice to women who are going through the same thing as me. I personally don't think that I'm an expert enough to give advice. So that's why I was just like, hey, Lou, don't you want to come help? Because I'm an, I'm, cause I'm an expert. <laughs> I mean, I have the qualification. I don't know. I just Do feel I? like <laughs> when it comes to dealing with being a single mom and deadbeats, it's always two better than one. Lou is also in the same situation as I am. She's also got two children. Well, actually, I'm just going to let her introduce herself and her, okay. and her motherhood journey. And how far, how, what, how did we get here? Oh, my God. Um, first of all, we got you through a series of very bad, poor, terrible decision making in our 20s. Okay. Um, I fell pregnant at 21. Not too far from you. Um, and then by then I thought I'd met the man, the man of my life. I thought that, listen, okay, so fast last time. Oh my God. Moved in, cohabitated, did the whole thing. By the time I was 27, I had seen all the flames that, even the flames that weren't invented yet, <laughs> I had already seen them. There's not one flame that man did not show me, okay? Oof. And to make things worse, when we when we separated, I didn't know it at the time. I was pregnant with my daughter, so I've got two kids. Um, my son is the same age as, as um, Alwande. He's 14. And uh, my daughter is eight years old. So eventually, the doctor confirms. Now I have to tie the liver to say, hey, Bafana, you know how we broke up? Yeah, you left a piece of yourself here. And um, we had both basically at that point reached a decision to say, nah we're good and uh, no amount of babies gonna bring us back together yeah. and i must say guys in the beginning the split was so amicable we cried it out we hugged it out we wished each other the best and things were good and i thought okay this is not so bad because i meant well you know we both had good intentions to say that it's not about the children it's about us but you know as time went on as finances uh -huh. became an issue as we both had our own demons that we needed to kind of flesh out and we got angry and angry at each other and he met someone and this person who has never met me before had subsequently decided that they can't stand me so that's where the problem then started that's where i then started seeing a different side of mm. him to a point where this man asked me for a dna test for both of his kids and mind you guys my son looks exactly like his father unfortunately for me they are twins and my daughter looks like me, but it had gotten to that point where we're now looking for DNA tests. We're now saying, don't speak to me. Uh, you speak to my wife. Um, she will man she manages the finances. And I'm like, hey, can't they make you little one? I never your wife now. And also, I have no interest. And, and besides that, I think for me, I'm, I'm in a situation where both my baby daddies are married and both their wives have made it clear to me that my children don't have fathers. If my baby daddies came to me and said, speak to my wife, I don't think I'd have an issue with it, but can I meet her? Can we have conversations? Can I know that she's got my children's best interest at heart? No, but also how she approaches the situation. Also, exactly. You can't talk to me like I'm no piece or something on the side. I think that I'm such when, a when we start with animosity from the from get, the get though, to, it's then I'm like, to... oh, okay, so this is this is the perception that we are going with now. Okay? I think I'm such a, a, a advocate for women, and because I know men, sometimes I'm always just like, no, guys, stop blaming women. But there are situations where you're just like, come, come on, on. Like, as really? a woman, you want to do that, you want to like, do that. Really? So th that's what had happened. So immediately, you know, when she came into the picture, the whole dynamic changed. And I remember the one of the most heartbreaking things for me was he didn't tell me that he got um, uh, what's the word let go of at work, and therefore and my kids had been on his medical aid, and I didn't know for almost two to three months or so that my kids were no longer covered on medical aid. I found out by chance when I was booking an appointment mm. for the dentist, and they were like, "But this medical aid is no longer active." Thank God it was for the dentist, not the ER. But what I'm saying is, how do you do that as a father and not communicate? It's something so critical. 
that's when i knew i'm like you know what whatever i get from this i get from it whatever they bring they take so you know he then helped with um school fees as far as he could but he made it seem like he was doing me a favor because he said even when i wasn't working i made a plan for the kids and as like, you should oh, you mean your kids you mean the ones you and i made those ones that are yours that share your dna you, that's how you're doing me a favor yeah anyway so that dwindled away eventually completely stopped so it's my kids it's been almost two years since he's been active in a financial perspective in my kids i think the last time my son saw his dad and this is so heartbreaking guys was he was my son was at the mall with my partner and he had gone to go exchange a pair of shoes um and luckily for whatever reason that day my partner decided to stay in the car because he wanted to finish some business calls so my son went to the shop on his own on his way there he bumps into his father shopping for his new son with his in-laws <laughs> this is the same man who had said to my son a few weeks before that um he doesn't have money he hasn't seen money in a long time no, and then no. the, and then when my son sees him He's now shopping. So obviously that broke him. And when that breaks him, that breaks me. Because I'm always the one picking up the pieces, man. You can imagine if it hurts me, what does that bring to him? Yeah. You know? And also I think for the one thing that we have in common here is that and I think a lot of us, even you guys, um the last video I posted about basically my deadbeats is that a lot of you are saying the same thing, Wuti. Whether you grew up or you were well not raised by one, but you had a deadbeat father or you have a deadbeat baby daddy, the one common thread is that they have other children that they are taking care of and they choose to not take care Correct. of your own. So like, how do you not take that personally? For me as a mother, obviously I take that personally because okay, so you just don't want to like be there for my children. But then what it does for the children, I can't imagine the emotional effect. Like sometimes when I have conversations with Alwande, mm -hmm. her, her thing is always, oh, I don't have a dad. It's not always, oh, I don't have a dad. It's always a why didn't he choose me so it's not that he doesn't know how to be a father he just doesn't know he doesn't just what doesn't want to be my father and that for a child i think when you're older you realize what you know what actually good riddance mm -hmm. chances are you're a horrible father not even chances are you must be a horrible father if you can't you father all your children yes. yes so chances are the children that you are being present for actually might end up even resenting you once they find out if at this big age i find out that i have siblings that my father hid and my father didn't parents trust it me my relationship with perspective of him everything together. my relationship with my father will never be the same of course so but then as a child you can't it's so hard to explain to your child what to know it's not it's not you because how does it how does the shop not take it personally when Seho goes into the shop and he sees his father shopping for his new child when you made it clear that you don't have anything for me how do you not take that personally and then when the child brings it home as you're saying now you are left to pick up the pieces of course you end up to have to explain and affirm your child about some things you also not even sure about. Oh, so not even sure. I have no experience. With, guys, I'm not a therapist. I'm not a counselor. I'm not a psychoanalyst. None of us are. You, uh, there's no book that prepares you for single motherhood, guys. Especially single motherhood in the conditions that we are. I think it's so different as black people, guys. And I'm not bringing us down as a, as, as, as a, as a race, but... There are a lot of inbred problems that we have and that we face on a daily basis. And it's single parenting in our circle is different and it's scary and it's, it will mentally break you down. So, you know, I, I know that the, 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 the topic of this was to say, how do we help other women who are in this situation? And, and, and I want to preface by saying this, I think it's so, it's a toxic thing that we've been taught that you must be a strong black woman. For me, I think there's so much toxicity behind that concept because we're not strong because we want to be strong. I don't wake up when they get white seeking. I am Shira today. I am Bogot. I am Emma. I'm the rock to not be rocked with. Like, no, you are strong circumstantially. The yeah. circumstance that you find yourself in is way in that you have to now start to lift yourself up from because when you go from there, when your kids come to you and say, Mommy, I'm hungry. Mommy, I want this. Mommy, school this, invoice that, rent this. You don't have a choice. You have to make it work. Yeah. So it's it's that inner strength that I guess for me I've had to learn to accept because for the longest time I was so angry about it. 
I was angry that I find myself having to be that strong. I was angry that I found myself having to be this Mbogoto mm -hmm. that I didn't sign up for, you know? And it's, it never, it doesn't get better because the, the dynamics also change. Because yeah. now my son is a teenager, my daughter is a tween. So she's going to ask me questions at some point that I don't know how I will answer. Yeah. But it's something that I must be prepared for, you know? So I guess in that sense, we have to embrace this inner parenting warrior that we have for one. And for two, I think blaming ourselves, that's the biggest thing. Yes, I made the decision to have kids with this person, but it's not like the person came with a warning line, uh, a warning label they to never say, do. you know what I'm saying? I went to therapy with my sister a couple of weeks ago and that the, that session still lives rent free in my head. And one of the questions she asked me was, have you forgiven yourself? And I sat there and I was just like, what does that look like? Like what does that what, what does forgiven what does it even mean? What do you yes. mean I've forgiven myself? She's like, no, I'm sure you blame yourself for, for being with these men, even oh. though I did not know both um my children, well with Alwanda's father, Alwanda is the firstborn. So sometimes I do feel like you you will know when someone is a deadbeat because they are deadbeat to their other children. And if someone is a deadbeat to their other children, surely they'll be here for you now, but like Surely they will they yeah, have that betrayed eventually, sure. eventually, you know. Mm. So for me, it's a I couldn't have seen it. I couldn't have known that this person was gonna be a deadbeat. Even uh, with Milani's dad, it's even worse because he was there for the first four or five months of my pregnancy. He promised me the moon and the world. He promised that he will never do what Alwanda's dad did, only for him to turn around and do it ten times more. So when that therapist said, Have you forgiven yourself? and I'm just like I don't think so. And then she's like, but what do you blame yourself for? And I'm just like, I actually don't know what I'm blaming myself for because should I have known better? But how was I going to know better? How would you have known better? You know? And also the other big part of blaming yourself is thinking that you can love a person right. You can love a person until they come right. You, guys, if that's where you are right now, human beings are not projects. And if you are projects, we're individual projects, which means you're a self-funded, self-operating, self-functioning project. It's not my responsibility to fix Mandy. Yeah. It's not my responsibility to fix my partner. Yeah. It's not even my responsibility to fix my kids. All I can do is guide them. And give them the and tools. And give them the yeah. tools and prepare them. But anytime you're in a relationship where you think that you can love someone until they change, if a person has shown you who they are, you kind of believe them. Yeah. And so these are the thoughts that you get stuck with. You're like, exactly like Mandy was saying, like, surely I should have known better in the beginning. But when someone in the... You know, they love bomb you. And, and you can't, guys, when you are love bomb, especially when you are starved of love and attention and affection, you, you lap that stuff up like it is a sponge to water. And then once the water gets drained out and you see what you're stuck with, you're like, oh my God, what did I get myself into? Yeah. That's when the anger comes in, the self-hate, the self-blame, and all of these things come in. And then only to find that that person is not even even an inch stressing as much as you're oh, stressing about it. All. You know? Life goes on for them. Of course life goes on for them. They don't they're not the one who has to deal with the consequences. They're not the one who has to deal with everything that has happened because unfortunately as a woman you will have to deal with you're gonna be the parent at stage. Okay. Even when you feel like you don't want to, I will always be grateful at the fact that when I had my first child my mom took her because at that age I would have never been an amazing mother. I would have been right. a horrible mother because I was 18. I was angry. I'm angry at the fact that this person left me, this person I was dating. Um, I don't want to say I did things right, mm -hmm. but like it wasn't a one-night stand. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a hookup. It was a person I was in a relationship with. And then they left. And I'm angry at that. And I was angry at the fact that I felt like my childhood was, my youth was taken away because yes. I was 18. Was. So I'm always so privileged that my mom took that responsibility of being Alwanda's mother because if it was me at that time, I would have messed up my child to a point of no return, you know. And also, as Lucia, she did things right. She was with this person for what seven, eight years, and, and he didn't still didn't out. work out. There are some married women who are honest enough to say that I'm married and I'm still a single mother. It's of it's course. it's women like that for me. I appreciate so much. There's nothing. I get so many DMs from married women who say, "Listen, 
I'm not gonna obviously say this on a timeline because mm -hmm. I'm still married, but like I'm a married woman and I'm a single mother. But so I'm it's things so like that when you realize Wuti, there's no formula, there's no way you could have done it in any other way. You would have you could have waited until mm -hmm. you're 30, you could have done it at 15, you could have waited for marriage. When someone is this person, that's who they, that's are. Who they are. And I think it's even worse in marriage. I can't imagine being a single mother when there's a man in the house. <laughs> I, I can't I like now I'm a single I'm mother and I know I'm a single mother and I've got two my two children and it's us you also a single mother you know you're a single mother so I can't be in my house in your house with my strength with your strength with and sometimes power. your money not sometimes but like your food must be bought food must be bought and he doesn't care and he's for just me, like I need to you wanted to get married there and that's for me I think it's even I, I hurt more for married women who are single mothers that's than true, us true. because I know I'm a single mom. I know what I need it's to do black every and time. It's white. black and it's white. It's no but having this man inside your house and everyone is going on about how much of the amazing father they are because they're posting pictures on and Instagram. And they do. Hey, these guys are really great social media dads. The social media fathers, let me tell you. Girl. Again, <laughs> not, I, I'm... I, I find it hard to give advice to someone when I'm still going through the same thing. So I don't think I'll ever be able to give advice to anyone because I'll always be a single mother. But for me, what has worked for me is, I always say this in my vlogs, is accepting my realities. That's when I when I, when I I moved to Joburg, mm -hmm. I moved um, because both uh, my, my daughter's parents, paternal parents, made it seem as if the reason why they're not involved in my children's lives is because they are in Durban. Mm. So when I moved to Joburg, uh, when I moved the children to Joburg this year in January, I sent both families, Milani's family and Alwanda's family, I sent them messages saying, listen, the kids have moved. You're more than welcome to come visit. Mm -hmm. This is my address. If you want me to come drop them off, let me know. But we are here. I never heard from them. And that was in January, the 1st of January. And in March, I, I think that's when it hit me, Uguti. Because I came here thinking, Uguti, I know I've got deadbeats. But, but at least their families are involved, are you know. So I thought I was going to have a tribe. I thought I was going to have a village. I thought my children were going to know their that father's at least family. They have this, that grounding. They, I, I never heard from that. them. You're completely they, alone. I, I, it was in March when I realized I'm completely alone, and I had like this huge nervous breakdown. I even I was shooting that weekend. I even stopped shooting, and I was just like, you know what? What the hell is going on? And I sat down. It took some time. Yeah. Where I was just like, you know what? This is my life. It's just me and these two kids. That's the and part. the most I can do is probably ask my sister for help. But it's it's the Jangis, the family, and these kids. Like and that's it. Their paternal um, parents, so grandparents. You might as well have gone to a lab and maybe. I might as well. Yourself. I might as well go to a fertility clinic and be like, just based me because I am alone. And it was such a hard, difficult thing to accept. accept. That acceptance is the first thing. Yes, right? but it was so hard. It I was think so hard. for me, though, at least for that part, because I fought so much for that, because I wanted, I, I was raised by, you know, a single mom. I have no contact with my father's side of the family, other than my uncle, who appears every day, once every decade. And I'm not dogging him out. I guess, you know, life happens, and I've accepted that. But I'm so grateful that from my kids' paternal side of the family, you know, um, my, um, I suppose my other mother-in-law, um, and Pomi has just been amazing. So she is my children's grandma. They keep in contact. She's just that element that connects them to that, that family. Side of so the family, yeah. I'm so grateful that they know where they come from on both sides of the family. So at least that's the one thing I can go, ah, oh, thank you Jesus yeah. for that, you know? And I'm so grateful that we can still speak. Her and I, there's no tension. I mean, in the beginning, of course, I was angry at their son and I would take out my frustration on them. But, you know, we worked around it and there is absolutely no drama from that side of the family. The drama comes from this one, this person. one person. And the sad part is that this one person, the way that they are behaving is exactly how their own father treated him. He, the, his father left, married someone else, and just forgot that he and his siblings existed. And it's so sad how history is repeating itself. And yeah. I remember he would always say to me, I never want to do this to my children. And look at you, look at you now. And, and you know, I also want to say that earlier, I said that once the woman came into the picture, it got worse. When I spoke to my partner about it, because it's important to have this perspective from a man's view, he said to me, no, but Whatever she believes and behaves like is what's coming from him has allowed. And that's so, why that's for me, guys. That's why my thing like I will always 
like I'm woman, I'm a woman first, Correct. and I know men, I know men Correct. like, but on the same breath, you are a grown woman, have so you are a grown woman, and we all know men now, whether you're married or not, whether you're married to him or not, you should have that thing in the back of your head. That. This could this story could not be it. I feel like as a woman, if I dated a man with a child and he came here and talking shit about his baby mama, already for me that's a turn off. But then if I find myself in that situation, the first thing I'm gonna do is give me your baby mama number. Let's talk. Let me talk to her. Let me yes, find her because, because there's your side, my side, and, and there's the truth. truth. And I oh need to hear God. her side because chances are there are so many things that you are telling me as my man. Yeah, it's that have been you, Exactly. So I, I have to accept the fact that she has this narrative of me that he has painted. And either way, he wins. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? That's the fucked up part for me because oh, they have either to way, pin you against he each other. Yes, to pin yes. you against each other because the minute you guys come into one room, you will realize I'm how much you have been. And besides that, it's the minute you and her come into one room, you will realize how much you've been lied to and she will realize how much she's been lied to. Now he's got these two women fighting him instead of fighting each other. I think it's convenient when the women are fighting each other instead of fighting um if instead I of could show you the screenshots that those two. but anyway that what I raised that to say Mandy is absolutely hundred percent right that the first thing is guys you have to accept that this is my situation. I am here, it is now, this is real time it's happening. Yeah. Like from there on out you are able then to decide what is my next move. And for me my next move was because for the first three months of the year, I thought, okay, I've got help, I've got help, I'm mm -hmm. good, I'm good, they're going to reach out, they're going to reach out. And when I realized by now, nah, these families are not going to reach out, mm -hmm. these families don't care about my children, um, what is my next move? My next move was putting my pride and my ego to the side and reaching out and asking for help from the people that I know can and will always be there for me. I started with my sister, then I started with um, friends who where I'm just feeling like this weekend is such a shitty weekend. Mm. I don't want to go out, but I don't want to be alone with these kids. A friend, can you please come over? And it was such an easy thing on their part to just be like, okay, cool, friend, I'm coming. Because another thing, we lose, we think we lose a lot of friends when but they're we pregnant, when we, we have children. Ourselves. Exactly. We don't lose them. We isolate ourselves. Yeah, yeah. And then when you reach out to your friend, and, and your like, friend oh, is just like, how? All of a sudden, it's Kali, and now we are back. And you besides know? that, now for me, when I reached out to my friends, she was just like, what took you so long? Also, what, what were you doing? What were you, yourself? without what you, was what was the point? What took you so long? And I'm like, no, I just thought that now that I have a child, you're not going to, you know, when we can't do sh fun things, we used to go out together mm -hmm. and now you can't. Okay, but now you're my friend. I will literally, my life will have to like have shift. To shift things yes. around. And that's, that's the important thing is that you have to have a village, guys, hey? You have to have your own inner circle where you know that when I'm with these people, whatever comes out of my mouth is not great. I'm not going to hear it from a third party. Yeah. Whatever I feel, whatever's going on in my household, whatever's going on in my bank balance, you have to have a safe circle. And that circle is formed by those friends who say to you, but Mandy, why were you going through this by yourself? Yeah. But Nisha, why did you think that I was, I was not going to be? Or, or the ones who actually insist who... Who will come to your to your door yeah. and knock and say no today? I'm so sorry. We we are doing yeah. this. Like I don't care if you're not answering the okay. phone. I'm coming. Like okay. I'm coming. And I, and yeah. and these are the people that you need to surround yourself. So first acceptance. Secondly, having a safe circle, a safe yeah. inner circle. And for me, I feel like a, a circle is not a hundred people, guys. I'm sorry. It can be three people. It can yes. be two people. It can be one person. Because that's how I've been healing. I don't go around telling every single person who cares to listen that they go up. I do. That's the difference. <laughs> I tell you guys. <laughs> you guys have become her in the circle. But the difference is that they, it's a relatable circle. You know? Oh, yes. you and, and also, as relatable as it is, for me, I say this all the time, YouTube is my safe space. Like, I would never go on TikTok and share my single motherhood struggles mm. the way I do here. I would never do it on, on Twitter. Sometimes I do. But like YouTube is a safe space and also I'm able to talk about these things because the not, it's easy to talk about things that you have almost healed from. That you process. Yeah, that you process. Yes. That's not healed process already. And now once I process something, I'm going to come on YouTube. Because there are some like things that... your mind. Exactly. Mm -hmm. There are some things I'm going through right now, but trust me, in the next month I would have processed it and I'm going to come back and be like, you guys, you remember this. You remember. And you know, sometimes I'm so bad. <laughs> Whenever she don't, cause we, cause here's the thing, guys. Life happens, and we're not always in each other's space. And sometimes weeks go by where we don't talk. And I'm like, it's fine. I'll catch up on YouTube. 
My sister also the other day. <laughs> my sister said to her therapist, she's like, well, I just watch her YouTube and then I know what's happening. Then I know what's happening. Mm, pretty much, really. So I guess Mandy Circle really is you guys because you guys have become a safe space and you guys are like her warriors to the listen. To the guys, oh guys, no, you don't know how much I appreciate you. Like the other no. day I tweeted something and my but Did you guys it not go viral with him. And all of you guys were just like in support of me and that for me makes me feel as if okay, I'm safe here. Like I'm safe. But I think like the difference is um as we were saying, she choose picks and chooses who to talk to. I once I process things, I don't care who knows about it. But like, I know that I'm an exception. I know there's a lot of more people who are like Musha than there are me. I don't mind sharing uh, my struggles. I don't mind talking about them. Um, that's because no one can use your truth against you. It's your truth, and when you direct your truth, it's your narrative. Because you said it first. So if someone else wants to start playing broken telephone, it's fine. But the truth is that Mandy has already spoken about it first. Already. So yeah. that's the benefit for that, you know. So some of us have that have trust issues because we think you're but 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 or or this and that. Nah, Mandy is just on some. It's A, it's B, it's C, and it is what it is. And you know? the things for me that I'm very open about, sure, yeah, is just deadbeats. There are the things I go through that I don't open mm -hmm. up about. But then I think for me, I've learned the basis um, of this whole channel for you exactly. was that you were gonna fight for this for the deadbeats, yeah. guys. I kept quiet for twelve years. Um, I, 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 I posted this. I, what, I started this channel last year, so for mm -hmm. almost thirteen years, mm -hmm. I had a deadbeat who was fucking going around saying his own narrative about me. Mm -hmm. I would hear the things that Alwanda's father would be saying about me, but I'd be like, mm, God will take care of him. Karma's gonna take care of him. I kept quiet, and then the day oh, we I must remember, God helps who helps those those who help themselves, isn't it? Also, I'm just saying. And then the. I can't remember when it was. Oh, the day I decided, okay, listen, it's been almost 12 years since our breakup. I'm reaching out to you. Our child wants to get to know you. He told me so much shit. And then I realized that Wait a minute. the 12 years of me being silent didn't do nothing. Because mm. as a black woman, you told me, no, you need to protect him. I wasn't protecting him. I was oh, protecting it him. It solidified his narrative. His of narrative me. of me being yes. crazy. His narrative of me taking the child to case of everyone in that neighborhood thinking it was I'm the baby. bitter baby mama. Mm -hmm. And then when I opened this channel, I got so many DMs from people who are his friends mm -hmm. saying, that's ah. not the story we know. Exactly. And that's when I was just like, nah, um, try la, la. and that's when with Milani's dad, I was just like, I'm not keeping quiet. I'm not in the in the business of protecting deadbeats. I'm not in the business mm -hmm. of protecting people mm -hmm. who don't care to protect my children. So that's why for me, anything that has to deal with deadbeats, I'm going to come here and I'm going to talk about it because I'm so tired of being made to feel as if Something, well, there's something wrong with you for speaking for, out. For speaking out. Because, for hanging your dirty laundry Because for 12 years, I kept quiet. What yes. did that do for me? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And you know what speaking out is doing for me now? It's slowly healing me. And I know it's slowly healing you too. So, And it's making those niggas really, really... It's, it's doing this. And I like that. That's the, that's the best part. <laughs> you know when you see someone go from... <laughs> what you don't say that? Guys, sometimes being petty is just fucking divine. I just want to put it out there. Just call us Petty Labelle. Also, maybe e -E -T -T -Y. that's one of the advices I would give. It's, mm. it's an unpopular opinion, but you know what? If you have to go lower, go, go low. Honey. You know, if you have to go to hell with these niggas, go to hell with them. Like, if you have to be petty to prove a point, be petty to prove a point. Silence only protects the abuser. Thank you. Silence does not do anything you. for you guys. Let me tell you something. It doesn't. It, it, does it empowers him because you know what it does? It lets him know that, yeah, he's I'm pet. And no pet of him. Pet of him. He's got you full well. You know what I'm saying? But what, what what we're trying to say is going lower, guys. Remember, when a seed gets planted, where must it be planted? In the ground, where it's dark. And it's going to be dark for a while. But when that seed comes out, and it's a flower or a rose or whatever, it's coming out and it's going to bloom and blossom. So can we stop protecting these people? Can we stop thinking, what are people going to say? What are you saying? How are you feeling? What are, how are your kids feeling? Yeah. So, so to, to recap, accept safe circle Let's talk about it be open about it stop protecting these people yeah what are you gaining from it guys like honestly if you don't want to talk about it let it be because you are not ready to talk about it not because you are scared yes it of, can't be fear. Of, of the backlash you're going to uh -huh. get from his family from him they don't care if they cared you wouldn't have those thoughts we would not be here we wouldn't be here this would not be happening 
I'd be like, girl, I can't relate. My baby daddy. My baby daddy. Yeah. My kids, you know? Oh, my, my baby daddy. As we speak, yeah. my kids are with him right now. In fact, they're going on vacation. We would not be here. Oh, me and his wife. Oh, oh we're besties. We oh, you know, like I call her at night when I want to go to Groove and she babysits for me. And I, I just, oh my God, guys, can I tell you one of the things I literally, what, I mean, I can't pray about it now. I, I don't think about it now because my Milani's dad's wife made it very clear that she hates my child. But like there was a time when I was just like, me and this chick can actually co-parent so well. Our children are the same age and they look exactly alike. I had these thoughts that you know they're gonna go to the same school. The yeah, they're gonna go to the same school. No, and I like, to like you know, mm. and I, I'm gonna be like, girl, can you pick him up? To, can you pick them up today? Oh, girl, I'll fetch them. I'll fetch them. Yes, mm. you know what, girl, you you you've been through a lot. Let me take the kids for the weekend. That's how I imagined this whole thing until me and her met with the families, and she said some of the most vile things about my child. Then that's when I, I think it hit me, Uti, this dream of you parent co-parenting so with it's unrealistic because she doesn't want to but you know what i have um plans of on dating mm -hmm. and i know that at this age the man that i'm going to meet is going to have children mm -hmm. and i pray to god that me and his the mother of his children have the relationship that i would like to have with mm -hmm. um yes. with um my baby daddy's wives so there's i'm looking forward to that i'm looking forward to co-parenting with another woman yes. <laughs> like because we all you have the same thing. Well, that's yeah, the yes. thing that i wish for everyone who's watching who's a single parent even for you and i'm so glad that this has i'm actually living that because when I met my partner, remember I told you, one of the first things he said to me, after I told him my entire story, and I thought, okay, cool, put on your daughters, get ready to run. And he said, I'm not at war with myself. So I say this to say that you have to open yourself up to the fact that you can, not can, you are meant to be loved. And you are, you are deserving of wholesome love, of kind love, of generous love. Of love that doesn't judge you of love that doesn't have these you know unrealistic expectations of you but you can't get to that point until you st start doing those things to yourself you remember I always say to yourself Mandy you have to be your man first and I'm not saying that because um, you're already your, your, your man by order of the fact that you take care of yourself but I'm saying you have to love yourself the way you want to be loved yeah because how will you recognize it when it mm, comes mm, you mm. can't you know so the going out, the self-care, the praying for yourself, the therapy, the acknowledging that you also have your own toxicity and how you need I don't, to... I'm perfect, I don't. Okay, well, I have. I'm joking. <laughs> Be in a space where you're willing to change and to heal yeah. and, and move on from there. Yeah. So I think that summarizes, okay, that's not even my blog, let me shut up. But, <laughs> it probably does. As you guys, as I mentioned, you guys, I don't think I can give any advice but I can give a shoulder, mm. I can give a listening ear, and um, I can give you what I've been through. And also, uh, single, advi single um, advice for single parents out there, go to court, my babe. I know that we've been made to be scared of court our entire lives, but let me tell you something. I posted a video, my, my weekend vlog was, half of it was about how I'm back in maintenance court, and half of those comments were other single mothers saying that justice worked in their favor. We are at a point, we are at a point now where it's unlike back in the day. I was in court just yesterday. Mm. I spent the whole day in court, but let me tell you something. I was helped. You will get help. The justice system is on, well, the justice system is on the child's side, Correct. which is obviously your side because Correct. you are the parent that stayed. Mm -hmm. ha get that courage to take the first step and take that deadbeat to court. I always say, even if you get a thousand right, guys, that's a consistent thousand that you don't have to fight for. And that's a thousand you can put as a, in your children's fund if you feel like you don't need it. That's a thousand you can give to your child's pocket money. Mm -hmm. I will always advocate for women to take to go to court so that your children are taken care of. Like let this thing grow to that point so that we start to heal. And not just us, but even those deadbeats. Because they need to take accountability, guys. You can't go around meet Savanto and then I uh say crent. Be meeting in Marani Crent. It doesn't work like that. Call them out, take them to court. My motto is no deadbeat is going to be comfortable 
while my children's lives are uncomfortable. I'm not here to protect them. Mm -hmm. I'm not here to make them comfortable. Mm -hmm. I'm here to protect my own children and fight for my own children. And that's what I want to do. Um, Lucia's son now was telling me that he saw some TikTok where basically this chick is talking about me, calling me like baby mama drama. I don't care. Mm -hmm. At this point, I actually just don't care. What I care about is fighting for my children. And, um, and that includes speaking up and stop protecting these men. But on the same breath, I will always say that I'm at the space now. I didn't wake up and get to the space. No, As I said, yes. it, take, it took me 12 mm -hmm. years. So no one is saying, what you wake up and go fight. But if you have just a little bit of strength in you, please take the first step and fight for your children. You will not Do regret it. it. It is an emotionally exhausting um, process. And the only reason why it's emotionally exhausting is because you have to face that deadbeat. Right. But the justice system itself, trust me, guys, it's way better than it was for our parents. So mm -hmm. trust me, please. Go to your nearest court and go apply for that maintenance. You will not regret it. That's my last piece of advice. That's mine too, guys. Stand up for yourself. You really have to. The part of fighting um, this whole process is standing up for yourself. And standing up for yourself means standing up to these men. Because this thing of saying, I don't want to hang my laundry outside, really will. Because when your kids come to you and say, we're hungry, or like in my instance, like I said, they my son, so he's he's all about that the more. And also, also one thing men do very well once you have grown, once your children have grown, he's gonna say your mother stopped me from Thank seeing you. you. Thank you. God, so if ladies, mommy took you to court, what, what couldn't you? What for? was mommy fighting for? Why did mommy have to take you to court? You. Number one, number two. If mommy was fighting you, why didn't you take her to what court? What was I fighting for to begin with? Hey, what was I fighting for? Nah, no deadbeat will ever come to both my children and say, well, your mother ne well, never allowed me to see you. And no. this is going on record and no. it lives on the internet. No. Forever. Let it be known. There's nothing that we had said to say you cannot be or you cannot have access to your children. If anything, every you time... You exonerated yourself. Every time um, Milan is that tries, I always say, cool. And then he fucks up. So yes. it's a matter of... But I will never... I will never block anyone from seeing their child and if you feel like i'm blocking you then you can take me to court and go fight you for you. parental rights like it's that simple the same way i took you to court for maintenance you can take me to court and go fight but they won't because i you guys now i can you know i can go on and on and on about <laughs> like we can go on and on and on but as mentioned, I don't think I'm in a position to be giving any advice, but I definitely can listen, I can give an ear, and I can... I all can I can speak say, from our experience. Exactly. All I can speak is from my experience and what's been working for me and how I plan on moving forward. And I plan on fighting moving forward. I will never stop fighting for my children. Honestly, guys, that's I think that should be a hashtag on Twitter. Hashtag I plan on fighting moving forward. You know. Yeah. I do hope that you enjoyed this video. Please, please, please do subscribe to my friend Lucia's channel. She is also a single mother and her channel is all about like corporate mental health and also motherhood. So you, if you enjoy mine, if you enjoy mine, you definitely will enjoy hers. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.